Welcome back to Thermodynamics. In this video, we will discuss about reversible and irreversible processes. Before explaining reversible and irreversible process, let's see one example. Consider a gas enclosed in a cylinder fitted with a movable piston. The piston is weightless and frictionless. That is, it is easy to move upwards or downwards. Inside the cylinder, there are some gas molecules. Let it be n moles. Let the volume of the gas inside the cylinder be V1. We know that the gas molecules will exert a pressure which tries to move the piston upwards, right? So, in order to keep the piston in place, I have put some weights on the surface so that there will be a pressure acting downwards. Now let it be P external. So we have two pressures. One is the internal pressure of the gas trying to push the piston outwards. The other one is the pressure exerted by these weights downwards which is P external. So these two pressures should be equal in order to keep the piston in place. That is P external should be equal to P. That means the gas cannot be expanded or compressed. Let the pressure of the gas inside be 30. Then the external pressure will also be 30. 30 in the bar is just a numerical value and any units of the thing consider a Manslak and Lupatina, just to value to Nelu, then the party pressure thirty on the majority. In and say, I'm poor another. Namely, male of a chicken the weight of Lundalo. Either Elam Yan, you were the Marta and Buan. Either Lella weights some Otiadikin and Marti Karina in the bottom. For a tulla pressure thirty lina, it will decrease. Now let it be three. And Ella weights some sudden item and Marti. So, if you have pressure, what happens to the piston? pressure It is 30. And the external pressure is only 3. So, what happens? The gas molecules will exert more pressure. So, what happens? The piston will suddenly move upwards. And this process occurs very fast. And the gas will expand suddenly. So, we have to a cylinder gas which is fitted with a piston. In a pressure and a balance, we have to remove these weights. So what happened? The piston suddenly moved upwards. The gas suddenly expanded. Okay. Now let's look at an example. The pressure value is 30. External pressure and internal pressure equal 30 and 30. These weights are removed at the same time. If I remove only one of these weights, the pressure outside will decrease by a very small amount. So let it be 28. Since the external pressure is slightly lower, the gas will start expanding gradually and the piston slowly moves to a new position. So let it be this position. That is the volume will gradually increase and the piston will slowly move upwards. The expansion is happening. Now if I again remove another weight, one single weight, again the pressure will decrease. Let it be 27. So there will be again a gradual increase in the volume of the gas in order to adjust the pressure and the piston moves slightly upwards. As the piston moves upwards to the new position, then the pressure inside and outside will again be equal. Now if I again remove another weight, the pressure will further decrease. Let it be 26. There will be a slight expansion of gas. The piston will move to a new position. It will move upwards. Also, the pressure outside and inside will again be equal. Similarly, if I remove these weights one by one, the pressure outside will gradually decrease by small small quantities and as a result the gas molecules will start expanding very slowly and the piston will move upwards. If at any stage 
if I replace one of those removed weights, then what happens? The outside pressure will increase and the piston will move downwards. If I replace yet another weight, then again the pressure will increase and again the piston will move downwards. अलवेटे and the gas is slowly expanding. Over the stage, the system is in equilibrium with the surroundings. In the stage, we will reverse the process by replacing one of the removed weights. Now, such a process is called reversible process. In the first case, when all the weights were removed at once, the process occurred so rapidly and hence it cannot be reversed at any stage. And hence it is called an irreversible process. But here, since the weights are removing one by one, the pressure is decreasing so gradually that the piston is moving upwards very slowly. And at any moment or any stage, you can reverse it by adding those removed weights. So such a process is called a reversible process. All natural processes take place so fast, they are so spontaneous and hence they are all irreversible process. All natural processes are irreversible. Now let's see the differences between a reversible and irreversible process. A reversible process takes place infinitesimally slowly and hence takes infinite time to accomplish. That is to take place very slowly. It's a slow and gradual process. Whereas an irreversible process take place very rapidly. It's a spontaneous process and take place very rapidly. The driving force in a reversible process is very small. Whereas in an irreversible process, the driving force is large and finite. As we have seen in the example of a gas in a cylinder with a movable piston, we saw that the process can be reversed at any stage. So a reversible process is a one which can be reversed at any stage. Whereas an irreversible process cannot be reversed at any stage. In a reversible process, the system remains in a state of equilibrium with the surroundings at every stage. But here, that is an irreversible process. The system is not in equilibrium with the surroundings at any stage till the final stage is reached. We will get maximum work from a reversible process. Whereas the work obtained in an irreversible process is always less than what is obtained from a reversible process. Reversible process is an imaginary concept. That is, it cannot be fully realized in actual practice. But irreversible process is a real concept. And as I said earlier, all natural processes are spontaneous and hence irreversible. So these are the characteristics of reversible and irreversible processes.